I want to show with you two scientifically backed, evidence-based ways that have been shown in research to lower a child's difficulty with ADHD, or it may actually reverse it. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. If you end up liking this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with one of your friends. Now, ADHD is a malady that has just kind of skyrocketed over the years. And what is it? Now, obviously, there's, it's a multifaceted problem, but we're going to look at some of the research that shows that certain things may increase the likelihood of having ADHD or this attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADD, depending on what you're calling it. And there are other things that you can do that can actually lower the chances of a child having this or actually lower the symptoms and at least make it simply better. By the way, I source the studies that I am reading from so that you can actually look them up, study them out yourself. Now, the first study we're looking at, you probably have heard of. It's called the Marshmallow Study. The Marshmallow Study was a study back in the 60s and 70s. And what they did was they took three to five-year-olds and they took these children, they put them into the laboratory with the scientists or the researchers and they they set them down at a table and on there was nothing in the room really except for the table a chair that they were sitting on a plate on top of the table and on top of the plate was what it was a marshmallow and what they told the children was if you can wait until i come back into the room i'm going to leave the room when i come back if your marshmallow is still there i will give you another marshmallow and then you'll have two marshmallows that you can eat it's one of the cutest studies you see these kids and they're maybe you've seen the videos there where they're look they're oh they're some are struggling you know they're they can't even look at it they just close their eyes so they won't see the marshmallow and and then it won't tempt them others are you know turning away others they get to the point where they sniff the marshmallow you know they're tempting themselves and some get to the point where they actually they lick the marshmallow and they're doing but hey I didn't need it right and no you didn't need it and so but some of the children they couldn't wait at all some of them they ate it others before the researcher was even done telling them that if they would wait the child already stuck the marshmallow in their mouth I mean they had literally zero ability to delay gratification and you think, oh, that's so cute. Well, it is cute, but here's the thing. They then followed these people for 40 years. And what they discovered was, is uh, for those of you in you know, international countries in the States, we have, a, we have a test that we take at the end of our high school before we go into college or university. It's called the SATs. And what they discovered was that these children who had stronger ability, the ones who didn't eat the marshmallow, the ones who didn't eat the marshmallow did better later in life in their SATs. And at the age of 40, they were more successful. They were happier. They weren't as prone to be overweight. And so what they concluded with this incredible long-term study was, is that the ability to delay gratification is one of the greatest predictors of success in life. And even, even at the age of three, so your character can be largely formed by the age of three. So the question is, is there anything we can do to help people who might be struggling in the area of being able to delay gratification? Here's research on viewing nature and delayed gratification. A study was conducted to discover if looking at nature could help increase the power of delayed gratification. Subjects were to look at simply pictures of nature, mountains or lakes, or pictures of buildings in the city. What they found, those who looked at pictures of nature exhibited substantially more power of delayed gratification and self-control. So what they discovered is that those who were looking at nature, the things that are all around me, actually that it would enhance their ability to delay gratification. Instead of, oh, that looks good, I'm gonna eat it, or that smells good, I'm gonna eat it, or, uh, man, I wanna be happier so I'll get high or drunk or whatever it is, that these things, by looking at nature, it could inhibit our desires to just go out and do something that may not be beneficial for us. So getting not only children out in nature, but even adults could potentially help them with things like addictions. A part of the brain that has to do with focus and ADHD is the right prefrontal cortex. Are there certain things that can be done to enhance the ability to focus? 
one of them might have to do with what we call green spaces. Well, right now behind me, we may not see too much greenery, but I'm just about to walk into the pine forest here, or the portion of the forest around me that is pine. And so is there a connection between greenery, nature, and focus? A controlled trial was done with young people with ADHD, while not on any medication, taking walks in three different locations. It was a 20 minute walk in environments ranging from urban to natural environments. And they tried to match time of day, noise levels, amount of people in the area to limit these factors. Those in the greenest setting had the best attention following the walk. So when they were spending time out in greenery, out in the nature, what ended up happening was that they actually had better focus and less difficulty with their ADHD. And this brings me to something that, well, what could it be that is making people, are there factors? Now there's several factors, as I already said, that may be contributing to things like ADHD. And one of them may have to do with what young people are doing. In, when I was a young person, when I was a child, you know, I guess, you know, 30 years ago, when I was younger, what happened? What would I do? We spent time, we were out in the streets, we were out playing, we'd go out into nature and do these kind of things. That was just a normal part of life. Now many people are afraid to have their kids outside at all without them, you know, watching them. And so what ends up happening, what do kids typically do today? They are inside doing what? Homework? <laughs> probably a little bit, but most of the time, what are they doing? They're playing video games, they're on the cell phone, they're on the computer, they're watching television. And what has research actually shown about this? Dr. Daniel G. Amen actually shares about research that was looking at children and the amount of time that they spend looking at well, screens, whether it, you know, television, video games, these kind of things. And what they discovered was for every hour that a child was on a television, it would increase, this is daily use, every hour daily that a young child would watch television or be on the screens would increase their chances of having ADHD by 10%. So what this means is if a child has five hours of screen time a day, it would increase their chances of having ADHD by 50%. Think about that. And how many hours a day are kids spending in front of screens? Typically a whole lot more than five hours. So this is probably one of, not the only, but one of the greatest factors that is contributing to children having these problems with ADHD. So if they're spending 10 hours, I mean, you get the idea. This is, this is getting to be a very serious, serious problem. And the thing is, is that when we consume these things hour after hour, things like nature just don't seem as interesting. You throw kids out who've been playing, you know, video games all day and you throw them out in nature and they look at this and they're like, boring, what do we do? I mean, what can you do out here? There aren't bells and, you know, explosions and, you know, all kinds of craziness going on around me. It's, it's quiet. Well, what did we do when we were kids? Well, we would make, you'd maybe make a fort or you'd, you know, go out, you'd go running through the forest, you'd climb a tree, you'd do all of these things. Kids will learn this too today. So giving young people more time in nature can actually begin to change their minds and begin the healing process so that they can become healthy, happy people as adolescents, you know, as, as their teenagers and then all the way into their adult years by learning to live the way we were intended to live. And that was in connection with nature. By the way, if you like this video, you'd like to learn more about nature and health and scientific studies on the benefits of either spending time in nature or natural remedies for things like diabetes, heart disease, various things that we look at, the actual scientific journals, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with a friend. God bless and have a fantastic day.